Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Seven Day Challenge, and today we have the adventures of Huck Finn. This is, by the way, the last episode of the quarter of the month. Uh, this is from 1993. It's an hour and 48 minutes. Why does it matter that it's, that it's the end of the quarter of the month? Well, it means that I'm resetting the list, and what I'm going to be picking from at the end of this episode is a some brand new stuff from a list of brand new stuff. And I'll tell you a, bit, a little bit about more about that at the end because a lot's changed <laughs> more than I th expected. Uh, this is a 1993 movie starring uh, Elijah Wood. Yes, you know him from a lot of things, but of course the Lord of the Rings movies is Frodo. And uh, he's, he's absolutely adorable in this. He is, of course, um, the Huck Finn is notoriously not adorable. He is pretty much a uh, a scam artist in pint-sized form. Uh, and in this, yeah, he's he's really little. Um, but he's you know his you know Elijah Wood's aesthetic. He's just got these big eyes, innocent face, sweet sweet demeanor. Uh, well, he's he's notorious and adorable at the same time. It's just kind of funny. You would you would look at that face and go, that kid's not going to lie to me. He's not going to try to scam me. He's not going to try to manipulate me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what Huck Finn is great at. And uh, that's, I think it's perfect casting uh, because you're like, oh, how can this kid get away with so much over so many, you know, <laughs> over so much uh, over his very short young life? But you know what? He was born into it. Speaking of born into it, his father's played by uh, Ron Perlman. Yeah, Hellboy and uh, Sons of Anarchy and so many other things. He's been in so many things. Uh, yeah, Beauty and the Beast. We're going to go way back. Let's go Beauty and the Beast. Why not? Blade. He was in the Blade movies. Yeah. Or at least one of them. Yeah. Blade 2. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the Del Toro really likes Ron Perlman. So uh, <laughs> this has a pretty dang great cast. It's... Uh, of course, these are based on the stories uh, by Mark Twain. Uh, it is set in the uh, era of slavery. And that, <laughs> one of the things going into this, I don't remember watching this uh, when I was younger. I don't know why. Uh, it feels like I would have watched it, but I guess not. Um, I'll, I treat, I'll treat it as something I have not watched if I cannot remember an ounce of it. So... Uh, this stars, uh, like I said, Elijah Wood, Wood with Courtney B. Vance uh, playing Jim. Now, in the original book, Jim has a, a an extended name, let's just say, and I was real worried they were gonna <laughs> they were gonna stick to the hmm, the original uh, wording in the book. Thankfully, not. So, yeah, it, it, if you don't know. Jim was known as N-word Jim. And yeah, it's it would have made for some uh, real interesting editing for television or for anything. So it's best to just call him Jim. He's he's a slave and he is uh he and Huck go on the run after a certain series of events which they're already acquainted with each other, but these events kind of put them into the same path. Uh, one seeking freedom, well, and the, both of them seeking freedom, uh, mainly because Huck is pretty much treated poorly by his father, uh, even though he lives with uh, these older women who've kind of taken him in to, to, you know, sort of make him a good boy, give him, dress him nice, teach him good manners, feed him, uh, which is something that his father really wasn't good at. Um, but he's good at drinking a lot and beating on the kid and threatening his life pretty profusely. It's, it's not a, 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 an uplifting origin, but, and it's also not a hero's story in any means by, because Huck, by his very nature, is a very selfish kid. And he will say and do anything to get what he wants, even if he doesn't really want much. He finds himself in a lot of trouble in most cases uh, through happenstance or from a <laughs> or from a lie that comes back to bite him. And yeah, it's he's really good at lying, really bad at remembering his many identities. Uh, one of the charming things about this is the fact that he's 
I want, to, I want to say charming, and it's also the fact that this can appeal to so many generations. Yeah, it's a Mark Twain. It's based on a Mark Twain story, uh, without all the N-words. Um, but <laughs> it it's, gives kids uh, and adults and I, and I, a look at just youth gone wrong, but uh, a kid who is beginning to understand right and wrong. Um even the circumstances he's in, the understanding of what's important in his life and who is important in his life and to his survival in some cases, um, isn't always what is broadly accepted as right, what's broadly accepted as good, such as slavery. And it's, it's kind of one of the, the through points of this thing. It's everybody, as far as he knows, as far as Huck knows, Slavery is just the thing everything everybody does. It's everybody has a slave. Why not? Um, or there is just slaves. People are slaves. Some people are slaves, and they tend to be black. And yeah, why, why would you? And when he finds out that Jim is trying to escape uh, his masters, well, guess what? He's like uh, he struggles with the idea of uh, that what he's doing is wrong. He he should not escape his masters. He should i should i should rat him out there's a there is a bit of a struggle here obviously this movie uh, involving these two would be much really really short if uh, uh he did turn him in so i'm not spoiling too much for you and also the book is a good you know a, a good i don't know how many years old this was, this story came from. and i can't I, I don't recall that there was necessarily a single story um that was that follows this through faithfully. This might be a series of stories. I don't recall uh, the structure of Mark Twain's original works. And uh, I'm sure there's a little bit of leeway here and there. But one of the appealing things about this is that while there isn't like a ton of action, yeah, there's certainly chases and there's gunfire and all sorts of action that goes in with this without, uh, you know, him being an too much danger, uh, you know, compared to most films these days. Uh, he is definitely in danger, and he, they, you can find Huck to be very appealing. He's, as much as he is a scamp, and he is uh, a liar, he's somewhat a criminal at times, he, he always gets through it, through, uh, through anything, with his personality, and some and eventually, when he has an understanding of right and wrong, he overcomes any situation that he's in. Oh, yes, absolutely. He uses, does the wrong thing many times to get out of his situations, but in the end, this is about him choosing what's right, and uh, it, and the, the struggle is real. So it's not just, and it's not necessarily the same. We're not living in the same world necessarily that he lived in, uh, but the decisions of doing the right thing are retained through generations um beyond uh beyond all the talk of story and philosophy and everything else this cast so many there's so many people in this and i've already given you a hint courtney b vance as as jim and and uh, elijah wood as uh, huck and ron perlman as his dad uh we get jason robards and robbie coltrane yes hagrid Jason Robards and and uh, Robbie Coltrane uh, playing a couple of scam artists, basically guys that you'd think that Huck would eventually grow up to be. Um, funny thing is that right at one point, uh, Jason Robards, who calls himself the king, and, and Robbie Coltrane, who calls himself the duke, uh, they form a team and they scam anybody they come across in order to get uh money they're actors they also know how to play people and uh yeah or at least they say they're actors but they're really good at pretending to be something they're not the funny thing about this is that robbie coltrane is actually british and jason robards is not uh but jason robards has to pretend to be an englishman and robbie coltrane plays a character who is deaf and mute so, uh, it, it would have been interesting to see it that it flipped, uh, but it, I think I think that's part of the humor is is that you get uh, Jason Robards, who is not English, playing an Englishman with a very pronounced accent, and <laughs> they're they're basically pretending to be the relatives of a dead man and hoping to in, uh, get some of his inheritance. 
uh, and they do everything they can to make sure that the real people that they're impersonating do not make it there in time. So they take at one point in this, and by the way, there's a lot of little sequences in which uh, uh, Huck and Jim uh, run into a number of different people, and it's always Huck's fast talking that gets him out of these debacles. But once they meet, meet these two, uh, it becomes a longer relationship. It becomes a major part of the film. And I'm not going to spoil everything for you, obviously. Uh, is there's, it's, I think this, is, this is a fun way. Uh, this may be a film that a lot of people have not watched. And if you grew up in this, yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, but there's a lot of people who probably have never bothered. Nobody's going to necessarily be Googling or searching out Huck Finn when they go to Disney+. Plus. They're looking for the Mickey Mouses and they're looking for the Star Warses and the Marvels. So, uh, but <laughs> in this, we also get a young Anne Heche, who is a redhead in this, and I didn't, I like, I recognize you, but I don't. And it took me a while, I had to actually look her up and go, oh, Mary Jane is Anne Heche. So, yeah. Um, it's, it's just, a, oh, there's uh, Curtis Armstrong, you know him as Booger from Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, he plays, plays a guy. Uh, that uh, comes into play here. Oh, Danny Tamborelli. I recognize him. He's from The Adventures of Pete and Pete. Yeah, he plays a character called Ben. Uh, there, there's there's a few faces you'll recognize throughout this. But so I honestly, is that was that who I thought it was? No, 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 no. Okay, never mind. Uh, I, I say one. You you'll love this for the cast. You'll love this for the, for the acting. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, Elijah is a kid actor in this, but he's there's a reason why he's stuck around, and he is a solid uh, kid actor uh, in this era. So uh, he's he's funny, he's beguiling, he's he's manipulative, he's he's everything you want Huck Finn to be. If you know who Huck Finn is from the books, I think he makes a great one. Uh, a lot of kids have played Huck Finn on stage and screen uh, over the years. But yeah, he's he's a pretty good one. So uh, it, it, this it's by, directed by Stephen Summers. Uh, but yeah, it, I, this is definitely worth your time. Uh, all the characters, you ha sometimes you have to wonder how they're going to get out of these situations. It goes back and forth. And yeah, it's, it's definitely worth checking out. I, I, you, I, I was surprised at how much I really liked this film. So I expected it to just be another standard, you know adventure mark twain story but uh they they did a really one really great job at casting and just telling the story in a succinct way but also in a way that just moves there's not a i don't think there's a down point in this every once in a while yeah they get a little discussiony about slavery but it's never to a point where they where the moralizing gets drags things down you know it, it has to be spoken and uh it there comes to a point where it's not just like a, something in the background. There are huge consequences for uh, for Jim, and it's when it builds. You do not get to be a slave who runs away. Then is also accused of something uh, he did not do. Um, and yeah, by the way, Huck has every reason, every opportunity to. Uh, report him and make a boatload of money. $400 is a lot of money back then. So, uh, that's, that's the little struggle that's going on inside the kid. And he, it's just, it's just, it's feels great to know that even though he has these doubts that he, uh, does the right thing. And even when you think that just, there's not a chance that they're going to get out of what they're going to get out of. And it, it gets really dark at the end. It gets really dark, uh, but making the right choices, um, it, it's, a, it's a happy ending. I'm, I'm not really ruining anything for you on that. It's a happy ending. So, uh, uh, Okay, now, new quarter starting tomorrow, October 1st. Uh, every month, every three months, I clear out all the things I've already watched, and I add all the new things over the last three months that have been added. And I also, when it did a deep dive, just I knew that I was down to maybe a little over 200 items remaining on my list. And like 203 or something like that. 
um, yes, I, I compiled all the shark stuff. I uh, took away all the sports stuff that was, uh, I did a few sports things and I think I have one more uh, that I've allowed on the list. Uh, but most of it was from ESPN Plus and you can go watch that stuff at ESPN Plus. I'm sticking to the, the core Disney and the Marvel and the Pixar and the Star Wars because that's the kind of things I love as well. So um, the funny thing is Disney Plus is not really good at giving you a clear indication as to what is on Disney Plus. It's a, it's a really tough search. And at the same time, now that the app includes like Hulu and so many other things, you have to parse out all that stuff. I'm not including Hulu in my searches. And now that, it, you know, like I said, I was down to like a little more than 200 items remaining out of the last more than almost nearly 1,800 things that I've watched so far, what, what at 1780 something at this point? Uh, yeah. Uh, I did a double check. And what, what I found scared me. I found a site that gave me a long list of everything that's currently on, and I double checked. It took me a, it took me a night. It took me a whole night. I do a lot of work for this thing for, for no reward. Uh, I should put a Patreon on here, maybe. Uh, but he, uh, yeah, I had to double check to make sure that those things, when I found them in the list, I had already watched. And also that some of the things they were listing are still on Disney Plus because they take stuff on and off all the time. And I found about 75 more things. <laughs> So this is the first time in possibly years where this quarter has more than the last quarter. We're going to start with 278 different things. 278 things. We had 265 last time. I know that's not a big difference, but normally like that's 75 more than I was expecting. And in some ways that's good, in some ways that's bad. That's bad. We have going to have a, about a total of 114 documentary type, reality documentary type things. Yeah, there's still Dance Mom spin-offs spin and there's lots of just exploring the wilderness. There's a lot of that stuff. There's more than anything else on Disney Plus that's remaining. There's so many National Geographic documentaries. And I know if you don't like those, I'm sorry, but you know what? I'm trying to do it all. And there's no, there's nothing wrong with learning something. But um, I also want to make sure I don't let this thing time out. Okay, here we go. Um, and there's like uh, all the Air Bud films are now on. And I found a Home Alone that I never watched. Oh, and things like, um, uh, like Jungle Book, the live action John Favreau one, that was not on Disney Plus for a while because it had a deal with some other streaming service. It might've been on Netflix or something. Um, same thing with Mary Poppins Returns. Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland appeared last year, last September, a year ago, and then disappeared after a few weeks. It's back now. So, yeah. Uh, what we're gonna find though in the next few weeks though that I already know what Halloween stuff is coming. And so I've already picked the days for all those. I'm doing 13 days of Halloween stuff this month, which is almost half the month. Um, because mainly, even if uh, once I blow through 90 more of these, it's still going to bring us under 200 by uh, the new year. And sure, they'll add a few things here and there, October, November, December, but I'm going to burn through a bunch of this stuff. I have like eight new things, eight new Halloween things at least that I'll be watching brand new this month because I don't know if we're going to make it to Halloween next year. I'm going to take care of all the uh, autumn stuff that I can, but in keeping with our tradition, I am going to be picking the first episode of the quarter now. 198. Now, um, since I've already picked out some of the Halloween things, if this does correlate to a Halloween thing, maybe I'll just watch it now. But, uh, uh, but yeah, we'll see. I'll just have to move things around. 198. Come on. Where are you? It is not a Halloween thing, but it is one of those things that's strangely hard to find on Disney+. Plus Because when I went to 
re verify that it was still on here, it doesn't come up the normal way, like using the words in the title. It's just really strange. But something we watched uh, a number of months ago, and this is the reunion for that thing. This is Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella, The Reunion. Yeah. It's like a special. It's, you know, Brandy and the gang get together again and talk about, hey, we did a thing with Cinderella. So, yeah. I don't know how many years it is, but we'll find out. Rogers and Hammerstein's Cinderella, The Reunion, is what we're watching next on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that. Bye.